the first question that i have is do i need to be an expert or a fluent writer to start my own blog saying a fluent writer if you mean uh, do you have to be an accomplished writer no if we had all been accomplished writers we might have been journalists somewhere but you just have to be a passionate writer who's keen on putting down your thoughts for people to read that is adequate you don't need to be an accomplished writer to have your own blog so one 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 sentence to this it was a wonderful answer i would say you would increase your fluency by keep on writing the blog writing your blog yes that's it i would say that if you as long as you have something to share that adds value to people's lives or you know uh, it it could be something knowledgeable or just something engaging or entertaining then you should just go ahead and uh, write the other thing is it should be your passion which drives you to write because the moment you're passionate about it it's going to come out effectively my question is what should ideally be a good blog topic i think whenever you set out to write about something it should be something that first of all you are convinced about with that you are passionate about and you have certain knowledge about it should be as the selina mentioned if you think that you can add value with whatever you want to write it should be your thoughts your conviction it could be informative it could be inspirational just like our toastmaster speeches it's basically what resonates with you so it, a blog topic it you know it's not necessary that what you write is going to appeal to everybody but every genre has its share of readers you have to be convinced about it so my question is should i make an outline or a structure before i start writing my blog as per my personal view there, there are no hard and fast rule for this remember we all are toastmasters first the obc format that is seeped deep into our dna isn't it the opening body and conclusion as we structure our speech with a hard hitting opening we develop a story with a message in the body and conclude with a impactful message uh, in the conclusion we can follow the same here too if you want to make an outline and structure it's well and good uh, one more thing conclusion is very important i have seen with my personal experience there are many readers who look at two things of your blog how it starts and the concluding line and if they find something interesting then they go through the entire blog and conclusion if it is usually ending with a question it will generate a lot of comments from the reader this is my personal view another parallelist can add to what i feel is sometimes uh, you have lots of thoughts on a particular topic so i would like to jot down everything all that comes to my mind on the particular topic i'm going to write about put down everything and then you can decide on your structure you know where what you're going to put in the beginning what you're going to put how you're going to have the flow that you can decide later but jot down all that you want to say so whichever way you want to go ahead what you know the ultimate uh, aim is that you write something that relates people can relate to and that you know something that engages people so uh, if if you have a structure well and good but if you don't have a proper structure and all it's fine it's as long as it's engaging and relatable i had a similar point basically everyone functions differently for me i don't jot down points but it's all in my head but for some mind mapping might work for some notes might work so each to his own but yes unless you have some structure somewhere in your thoughts it's not going to translate onto paper or onto this so you have to know what is your purpose statement and where you're heading and then you work out the details flesh it out i have a question what is the ideal style for writing a blog first person or third person if i were to write uh, something on my own travels i would like to keep it in first person but that's not necessarily true for any everything that i want to write on so it depends on the topic whether you want to keep it in first person or uh, third person so it can be first person style it can be third person style it can be in past tense it can be in present tense 
So that's all up to the writer. Yes. I as think long where as tense you... is concerned, we just need to ensure that we maintain the same tense throughout mm-hmm. because that's, mm-hmm. uh, the, that's something which happens when we write in present tense because uh, in past, normally there never is a problem. Even future, I don't think there's a problem. But when we stick to the present tense, there's always a confusion somewhere that we revert to a past. So that is the only problem I've seen happening with present. Otherwise, uh, as Tazlina said, any tense, any person is fine. This is the need of the piece that you're writing, basically. It could be a combination of first person. as If it's a narrative, you're not going to be using first person. But if it's your personal experience, you're going to use first person. So it's entirely up to the requirement of that particular piece as to which tense. Just to ensure that you're as far as possible grammatically right. Uh, my question is, should blog ideally have a purpose or a message? If you ask me, there can be a blog without any purpose or a message, but ideally it is better to have a purposeful message in your blog. Then only see why, 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 why are you writing a blog first of all? It's a personal experience, personal view, personal thought, which you are trying to share with uh, people. And then if it is purposeless, then who's going to read it? So it is better to have an underlying message or purpose that will improve the readability of that blog. Now, uh, just to elaborate further, if you are going to write a blog for this district 105 page, then the purpose is clearly defined by the district itself. What they are told, your blog should either be talking about leadership or communication or should be sharing of knowledge. So purpose is very well defined, isn't it? So you have to, you have a broad framework and you fit in your blog with this. That is what I, is my view. I think probably uh, this is a, another common doubt which crops up in several minds because it did crop up in my mind. Uh, when we say, does it have to be related to communication, leadership and knowledge sharing? Does it again, again have to be about a Toastmaster role? Uh, I think um, uh, DTM Saiju has clarified that no, it is not that we want you want the blog to be only on Toastmasters, but somehow it needs to be linked to Toastmasters that you write any piece. But like we would do our speeches, product project speeches, where we talk about anything, but we tie it up in the end somehow with a communication or with a message. So do the same thing for the district page. It's not for all blogs, but for the district 1051 any topic, but then tie it up in the end such that it uh, is relatable to Toastmasters. If I may just add one more thing, as the others have said, for Toastmasters purposes, yes, tie it up with a message, tie it up with a call to action. Even if it's something like a movie review, what was the lesson? What inspired you? And what is that related to? You know, a life lesson that you drew from there. But if you are just blogging for yourself personally, then it's up to you whether you want to create a niche. You could have a blog which talks only about fashion or which talks only about minimalism. It's But when you create a niche, you get readership. And if you want to just have random musings, if you want to use your blog like a personal diary, no one's stopping you from that. Everything in life, sometimes it's nice to have no purpose as well. You can just indulge yourself. But where District 105 is concerned, have a purpose. The three rules. <laughs> How many words should my blog have? Yeah, I'll just take it up. <clears throat> if my other panelists allow me. Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the limit is already indicated in our district 105 blog. It is, it is defined as 500 words. But even otherwise, we are not talking about, say, 105 or district uh, blog page. In general, if you are going to write anything more than 500 to 800 words, you will not be able to hold the reader's attention beyond 800 words. So limit your thoughts and your uh, words to 800. That is better. That is my personal feeling. I'll tell you my personal experience. In one of my reviews, uh, movie review, and it went on a bit long. Uh, it went on so long, so I got a comment. It was a bit sarcastic. The comment was so nice. It said, 
अरे हरीश had you written two more paragraphs it would have been the screen play of the series itself i got that message so it should be crisp concise within 500 is the best according to me make it concise and make it short as as you know the message should be passed but it should be short and concise and that is the best way because nowadays people don't have time to read a lot of uh, content my question to you is Oh, can you give me some tips on how do I write an engaging uh, blog for my audience so that they wait for my second blog also? Actually, um, one of the most important things when you start blogging is uh, don't start with just one idea in mind. So what happens is your first blog you give so much thought to it and you create a beautiful piece and then suddenly you're without ideas. So the ideal thing would be to have a list of about 3 4 topics at least keep 3 4 blogs ready with you or ideas with you so that one after the other you can create your pieces when i say one after the other it doesn't have to be on successive weeks you can plan for yourself that i'm going to release one every fortnight so then um, you have a continuous flow coming of articles one after the other now where what should you write on it's entirely up to you you have inspiration all around you in life from the mo- moment you get up till when you go to sleep think of it this way what would you like to read ask pose that question you know if you were the reader what would engage you i think a lot of your answers come from the questions that you ask yourself and then also make sure that you avoid technical jargon unless your specific your audience is specified you know specifically that but if you just want to have a wider audience use language even if you're talking about something technical use language that is you know understood by the majority don't go into the complexities of language be be direct be yourself i think one of the best uh, things which i was to- taught as a child when i started writing is be yourself don't be shy to be yourself and be passionate about what you're writing it translates and your reader will be engaged uh, when it flows from the heart it is relatable to your readers and uh, relatability when it's relatable it's obviously engaging i just want to add that everyone is unique everyone has his own niche or reach what you call it so you develop your style using that particular thing and then then you can have your own style of writing you can start uh, writing uh, blogs which are engaging to the audience just start can you give me some tips or tricks uh, for giving a apt title to my blog i would i I'll, i'll just take this because i feel this is the best hook one can have if your title is not generating the intrigue that curiosity then probably you had it rather i can go a step further and said don't start writing a blog if you don't have a right or apt title because a title is the biggest hook this most of the readers will look at the title and then get into reading of that so it is very important and how do you do it title need not be something which is very obvious it should be uh, just good enough to reveal something not the entire message so that you generate the curiosity in the audience or, or the readers rather let me just give you some examples like uh, my my basically my movie blogs the titles are very intriguing like i had named one blog as human side of human computer this was about a film about shakuntala like the latest one i did a, a movie review the title was mallu naikan it was about malik a malayalam movie similarly there was a movie uh, i had titled it a gentleman thief it was about lupin it's a french series so so reading the title itself is the biggest hook you can draw the reader and make him read the book very well said uh, dtm harish bilji can i add my two cents uh so about titling i'd say that uh, it is it should be it is best if it's short and catchy uh for for example if you're writing about a uh, whale you know or about the dwindling numbers of a blue whale uh, you can just uh, title it as at whale watch 
or something you know uh, it it uh, it helps it uses the help of alliterations and alliterations are words that start with the same uh, letter that's whale watches both are starting with w so that's a, a very catchy way of titling that's just one of the examples or one uh, tip for someone to put a title but uh, for uh, blogs which are informative you might not be able to make it short you might have to put it uh, you know put a long title like you know if you are writing one of those how to do blogs or uh, 10 things you can do kind of blogs then you have to keep the title long and uh, it should actually uh, specify what your blog is going to be about now we spoke about the title uh, in the body itself is it okay to use bullets or subheadings and things like that i think it's absolutely fine if that is the demand of your piece like the slina just mentioned if it's an informative piece i would think the way to you know uh, if you're categorizing different kinds of uh, travel okay or different kinds of me- methods of uh, exercising put it under headings and then put bo- bullet points these are the three steps five steps this makes it very easy for the viewer to see and also go down to the section where they want to em- you know start off with bulleted points actually make it easy to read for them to remember so i would say if that is the demand yes use it but if it's an experience you're sharing then there obviously you're not going to have bulleted points there's no need for it so it is again the need of the article that you're writing the piece that you're writing and also you don't want to reveal what's going to come in the next paragraph it's a an experience so then i would avoid it it would just be a smooth flow from para to para without bullets without uh, uh, heading subheading <laughs>